Hello and welcome to the Sub1 YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video, part 5 of Fred's Brain, we are going to look at changes in the program. The program for Fred's Brain is an evolving program as we learn new things, as the Nixie version of My Robot Lab evolves. We also need to make changes to the program so that it evolves. So I've been busy making changes, some of us just to make the uh, comments a little more clearer. Other changes are fairly significant. So I'm going to go through a couple of changes that have been made just recently. And with that, we'll go to controllers where I've made the most changes. And for that, I need to actually go up to the program. So in controllers, recently we added a second Arduino Nano support. That was at the request of uh, one of the Discord users uh, wanting to add a second Arduino Nano into the head of his build of the InMove robot. So that's been installed. He's running his on a Windows PC but he wanted to put an Arduino Nano in the head. So I've added it in here. And one of the things I've now done is created this little routine here. So this routine will actually look at I2C capable devices. And when we call this function, and it is a function because it returns a value. When we call this function, we pass in the name of the controller that we're looking to test for, what we've configured as, and the current state. You know, is it uh, true or false? Is it enabled or not? And then we return either the current state, if the controller that was selected exists or has been enabled, uh, or we return false if the controller that was named is not enabled. Uh, this makes it a little bit easier when we have um, controllers that are attached to a device, an I2C device attached to a particular controller, but that controller is not enabled. And so therefore the service is not loaded. An example use of this is with this one. So this line here is the one where I actually call the test for the Adafruit 16C servo driver for the head. If, the, uh, if we're attaching it to a device that does not exist, it comes back as false. If we are attaching it to a device that does exist, like a Raspberry Pi for example, then it will leave it as set. So if in our config we've got that set to true, then the next line here will be uh, tr valid, it'll be true, and so it will then load and start up the servo driver. One of the other things I've changed is in the past I was putting in here head attach, but I was running a series of if statements, and I'll give you an example of that where I haven't done an update yet. So servo's right arm. How about I click on the right screen? So servo's right arm. What I was doing is I was testing for every possible controller to see if they exist. And if they don't exist, or if the one that was requested doesn't isn't enabled, it then sets it to false. Now we just test with a single line. So this one tests for the I2C, see if the I2C controller exists. And I do that now for all of them. It reduces the size of the code quite considerably. It also makes it easier to add new controllers into the future. So if, for example, we want to add another Arduino, then we can 
another Arduino, put it in the code in one place only, that's in here, and we've now got support for another I2C device or I2C controller. The same down here, these are all servo controllers or servo capable controllers and we put them here. We've also got all the Arduino are servo capable as well so we include those in that list and then when we get down to our you know, server head for example we can test it with a single line and that simplifies the code an incredible amount. Now the other major thing was with the runtime get service. So runtime is a service that starts every time we start my robot lab. Uh, it's the core foundation of my robot lab. Uh, it's it manages pretty much everything in my robot lab and as such we can use it we've, we've used it before in the start uh, routine to find out uh, what version of my robot lab we're running so here's runtime with get platform and platforms we get the platform structure from the platform structure we can get the version so we can actually find out what version of my robot lab is running and that's why some of the code changes based on the version you're running manticore versus as nixie for example sometimes it can be based on the actual version number so with that in mind we can actually check versions but with runtime we can also get service we can actually get the service based on the name of the service. So when we create and start a service like JAW, we give it the name as well. And we can use that with this runtime get service to get pass in the name that we want and it returns the actual service. So we can attach to the correct service. And this means that we don't need to have uh, all of the and or if else if uh, commands that we had previously so previously when we were doing that we had this if the attachment is equal to head then we were going to attach it to the head if it was equal to the back we were attaching it to the back that meant that when we added a new point that you could attach a servo to I had to add it to every single servo by using that simple test now I was using this runtime get service. I don't need to run all these if statements anymore. I can, it will return the actual service that we need and we can do our attachment to that. So that simplifies the code a lot, makes it a lot easier to add more controllers down the track. We can also use that to add other uh, tests down the track as well. So we can uh, add in more features in the life functions and the like so they were the two major changes we've made to simplify the code and that makes bug tracing a lot easier as well and there's less chance of typos uh, over the next few days i will be completing all of the servos at the moment i haven't i've done the head the neck and the torso i've still got the arms and the hands to do for both left and right and I will get to those. Um, in the head section, uh, at a request from Shido, I've added in, I've got it here somewhere, I've added in some extra uh, head servos uh, or support for. And Shido is actually working through coming up with the life and gesture controls for those. Now, the things he's added is a lateral jaw mo motion. Uh, there's a single servo for that, and it allows the jaw to move, I think it's side to side. I'll know more when I see his video. He's also added eyebrows to his robot, and he's using two servos on each eyebrow to allow the eyebrow to tilt, to go up and to go down uh, in a 
attempt to express emotion. So support for those has now been done, but I haven't finished it. I've done the first one, but I haven't done the rest. So I'm actually going to fix that now. I've started to uh, put it in there, but I didn't complete it. I did that one, I missed one. That would have come and bitten me later on. So you'll find that update will be up on the GitHub uh, as soon as I finish uh, pushing it up there. Okay, so I've just uploaded that to GitHub, so that changes there. It is listed as a bug fix while recording video. I've got to go through and check all these files again to make sure. Now, what prompted all of these changes to occur was after a change in my Robot Lab Nixie version, uh, version uh, 1.1.552 had some significant changes to the way a number of services operated. Um, specifically, uh, the MPU 6050, and it was all to do with the way it was launched. There were a couple of things that were changed, so I had to change the way the program called it. That's right runtime service attached so pre in the previous code this was a text string so i was able to pass in just the mpu 6050 attached that no longer works with the latest change so the workaround was to use the runtime to actually get the service it would only accept the service whereas before there were overlaid functions that would allow us to pass either the name or the service so now we can use this to overcome that issue. I've added in that uh, I2C controller test, which I haven't implemented yet in this code. And I will, in fact, I will do that right now so you can actually see it being added. So I'll go back to controllers where I know I've got a copy of the actual program. And that's this one. This is the call that we'll be using. Now, in this case, we are setting that value. So we're going to replace that. We're going to pass in first the name of the attachment. And then pass in this value before we've modified it. And now we don't need any of that and now it supports any more Arduino devices being added if we add in a controller such as a I2C multiplexer we can also add that into being in the list of valid I2C devices and that's something that I might add in at a later date so we'll just repeat that Because we've got it there again. In this case, it will be for the B unit. And we can get rid of all of those 
lines. And that simplifies the programming quite well. Roll S. And that's now saved. And I'll push that up to the GitHub shortly. NeoPixels also had a change. So in this case, it's uh, Arduino based only. Uh, I haven't actually created a function to test for Arduino only. I will do that in the near future and I'll update this one at the same time. Uh, I also need that for another section. Uh, one of the things that's changed after we create the runtime for the NeoPixels, uh, based on if it's less than 525, I thought it was 552, 525 is the last one that we used the old method where we passed in the service, we passed in the pixel, uh, the pin that we were connecting the NeoPixel to on the Arduino. And then we pass in the number of neo pixels. After 1.1.525, it was changed, and now we have to set the num the pin that we're attaching it to. We have to set the number of neo pixels we're running, and then we attach it to the Arduino device. Uh, this is a very different way of doing it. And if you tried the old way with the latest version of my robot lab, it breaks. So I've added in this version check using the platform structure get version that we we uh, pulled in earlier, and then we run the appropriate attachment of the neo pixels. I think I still have to do that one for the second one. No, I have already done it for the second one as well. So. These are a couple of the updates that we've I've made to the program at this stage. I've still got to get into the life feet functions. So life functions are the ones that simulate life. These are different to gestures. A gesture is a series of pre-programmed uh, moves that are called on by usually program AB or it could be called on by one of the other sensors in the robot. A life function is where we call, say, the eyes to move up and down. And if you have two eyes, it will call each servo independently. Or if you have two servos for the eyes, it will call both servos at the same time to move up and down. If you've only got the one, as in the original in-move design, then it will only use the one servo and it does this without crashing. Uh, we are all, I'm also adding in features such as look left and look right. So as it looks left, the eyes will move first. And then when it re starts to get close to the limit of the eyes, it'll start moving the whole head and then center the, the eyes a little bit better. So this is where we're combining servos into a single command. And that's done as part of the life features or life functions. Blink is a life function. Uh, it is a periodic thing. It is not something that is called on by program AB. It's an autonom autonomic function to simulate life. So it comes under the life function. Uh, I'm planning on adding in the MPU6050 into the life functions to keep the head level as it rotates. Those of you who have already played with the roll neck uh, adaption will probably know that if you're looking up slightly and you turn the head left or right, it will cause it to look up further or down further based on, uh, or even roll the head over, I should say, as it rotates the head around. So using the MPU 6050 in the head, the plan is to uh, compensate with the roll neck as it rotates the head around so that'll be coming up and when I eventually get that working properly I will go through that bit of program as well we will also be linking torso control as well 
and we're going to try and put in a few extra features like if you rotate the torso the head stays still uh, linking it in with the MPU 6050 and that will then come under life and then just your functions as well um, I'd like to thank uh, Shido for suggesting updates and upgrades and he's working through some of the gestures so hopefully in the near future we will have some gestures added in as well and hope when we get down to brain we'll get into a little bit more detail on how we configure the brain including the artificial intelligent markup language and how we can use it to call uh, out of band uh, functions so we can actually call features that we want to run uh, at the moment there are a number built in that got in past the current way of doing things in my robot lab and they call on inmove features that aren't present in a otherwise different build and they are being corrected in the near future well that'll do for this video if you like these videos don't forget to click on the like button if you're not subscribed then please consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell uh, only about a quarter of my viewers are actually subscribed I have a patreon account so if you want to support the channel uh, in a financial way uh, please feel free to follow the link in the description to the patreon and join El Morales 45 and my VIP Patreon go lucky they get the benefit of seeing these videos two or more weeks in advance of the normal scheduled release dates and they have a fairly large influence on what videos I also produce from time to time there is a discord channel uh, which will have a link in the description if you've got questions if you've got suggestions or if you just want to catch up and talk with a few other avid robot builders uh, drop into discord and make yourself known and i will see you in the next video